Hi there, it's Nicole here today with a Dos Amigos plus Three Amigos Love You card. I love that Mama Elephant joined up with Hampton Art to create or extend their collection of Amigos. The original Three Amigos stamp set has three cute critters in it and then the Dos Amigos has two, a little mouse and a bunny. And I think together all five of them make just in any assortment make really adorable cards. I always, always am a huge fan of companies that expand on sets that they already have or um, just different products they already have to extend the life of those products. I am a huge fan of cute critters, especially cute ones you can customize. And I, the little signs that these guys hold are really fun and can be customized not only with small greetings from Dos Amigos and Three Amigos, but there are other stamp sets that would work as well. So look at what you have and um, try to mix and match. Because I think there's some from the little um, small messages or the mini messages, I think it's called, stamp set from Mama Elephant has some little greetings that would fit these perfectly as well. Mine are going to read, love you, me too, me three, I agree, and what they said. Um, I did have to cut out my little fox here. My original coloring, I messed up his little face, so I removed that, re-stamped him, and I'm coloring him with the colors shown across the bottom of the screen. Everything here is stamped on Nina Heavyweight Smooth White cardstock. I've gotten some questions lately regarding what cardstock I use for Copic coloring, and so I wanted to revisit that, especially for my newer viewers and things. I am a huge fan of the Nina Solar White cardstock. I have transitioned, I used to use, I think it's the 80 pound weight. I've transitioned to the 110 pound weight. It's just a little bit more sturdy. Anytime I am doing Copic coloring of any sort, that is the cardstock I'm using. There are a few others that work well with Copic markers. This has always worked well for me and it is my staple white cardstock. As far as the ink goes, there are a couple different ones I use, but a lot of the time, I would say probably 80, 90% of the time, it's Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which is specially formulated to work with Copic markers and to not bleed. Once I have the critter colored, I'm gonna color in his little sign he's holding. And each of them are gonna be holding kind of a primary colored sign. I've mentioned it before, but many times, if I'm not quite sure what color combination I'm going for, I started this card without a plan, per se. And when I do that, I gravitate many times towards quote unquote rainbow colors. This definitely isn't completely rainbowy and I didn't put the um, critters in that order or anything like that, but I like the look of the primary colors. They're happy, they're fun, and they make the neutrals of the animals, the little primary colored signs really pop against them, I think. The raccoon is next. Warm grays are what I'm using to color in him. I think there are also throughout the Mama Elephant collection different stamp sets where you could customize these critters if you wanted to with different hats or hair bows or, or whatever. Um, if you want to maybe make them a little bit more feminine, if you will, I did use the little top hat from the Three Amigos stamp set to give um, one of the characters just a fun little touch, nice little accessories or embellishments for these critters. Once my raccoon is colored in, and I went back and darkened him up just a little bit more, I felt like some of the areas were a tiny bit too light. I like to err on the side of caution and tend to go lighter and then work my way up to a darker color as needed. I'm gonna color in this signage with some green markers. 
So YG 01, 23, and 17. And that's going to make for a fun green sign here. I start with a lot, my lightest color in the center. And then I'm working in darker colors on the outside, gradually, you know, a little bit darker, and then really light in the center. And just go over that as many times as necessary to get a nice blend. The bunny is also going to be in some shades of warm gray, but much lighter shades of warm gray than the raccoon. A lot of warm gray 3 and warm gray 00, zero even a little warm gray 1. And then R00 is the pink that I'll use for the cheeks and the nose on the bunny. I want the bunny to appear almost white, but still have some nice shading and texture so it doesn't appear like a flat image. You want it to blend in nicely with the others. Now the sign here, you're gonna see me color in some pink markers. I originally thought I would do some nice bright pinks here and it really wasn't working for me. So after this was completely blended and I let it sit for a second, I did go back over this and colored this image. I did not stamp another image. I went right over this with some red markers and I like the red so much better. I think it works better with the card design. Don't be afraid to try to fix it without re-stamping if possible. I like to leave those mistakes in so that you guys know that I don't always hit it um, out of the park on the first try. There are mistakes, there are color choices that are not right or not right for the project or whatever. It happens and I always try to like try to find a way to fix it if possible. So you can see the red there now over on the right side of the screen. The mouse is holding an orange sign created with YR04, 7, and 9. Love this little mouse, he's so cute. I really do not like mice at all, except in images and coloring them for cards. <laughs> so I don't know what that's all about. Next, the cat. Again, I chose a little too light for the cat, but that's okay. I can always cover that up with darker markers. And I have done this before with cats and have found that sometimes I start too dark. So I've gotten to where I start a little bit lighter because I can blend out later as needed, which I will definitely do here. And I'm gonna create some nice little stripes on my kitty. Using those same colors I used for the fox, it's gonna give a whole different look for the kitty when I add texture to his fur this way. This is really where I felt like the base color was soup, way too super light and very noticeable. So I'm going back in with E13 and darkening up all the fur underneath. And then I can go over my little stripes as many times as I need to to get the look the way I want. I also love this color combination in grays and blacks. But where I had quite a few critters in gray already, I decided to go with my little orange tabby cat here. His sign is going to be in yellows, Y11, 8, and 17, to kind of round out my primary colors. Again, lightest color, either all over or concentrated in the center. My darkest color coming in from each side, pull that out a little bit with the mid-tone color and blend down the center with the lightest color. The frame I'm going to use for my card is one of my very favorites. It's from one of the more recent releases from Mama Elephant, the Tri Window Frame. I love this. Now I die cut this from smooth white cardstock again. No special cardstock. A lot of times I will use Bristol Smooth for blending, but I wanted to show, and I've been trying to show more lately, that you can still achieve fantastic blending results just by using a little bit lighter hand. It's smooth white cardstock isn't quite as forgiving as Bristol cardstock would be or watercolor cardstock. So you have to use a little bit lighter hand and maybe just persevere a little bit more to get those blends the way you want them. 
I use post-it tape to hold together those inside panels with the frame because I'm going to use every little bit of this for my card. I'm starting with Salty Ocean Distress Ink along the bottom edge. I'll blend in Twisted Citron next and then Squeezed Lemonade is going to round that out at the top. And I want to blend and blend Go back to my blue, blend the blue into the green, so you get that beautiful seamless transition from one color to the other. For this card, I won't be using any distressing with a distress sprayer or water of any sort. Instead, I am just going to stick to coloring my cardstock, cardstock with the distress inks. This is some squeezed lemonade to round out my trio of colors. I really am a huge fan of the frame matching the inside area. I think it gives a beautiful seamless transition. A lot of times I pop up the frames, which I will be doing that again today. I like when the dimensional frame matches the inside pieces. Before I get too excited and start attaching anything or add my stamped sentiments, I'm going to tuck my little critters in here and make sure everything's going to fit the way I thought it was at the beginning of the video. That looks good. I'm going to take greetings now from the Bear Hugs stamp set. I'm an, also a very big fan of mixing and matching my stamps and supplies when possible. You get a lot more mileage out of what you already have if you mix and match them. So the I love you from your favorite is what I'm going to use here right next to the bunny. Since the other two windows have two critters each and there's really not room for another stamped greeting, this window is perfect for adding a sentiment next to the critter there. Stamping that with some black ink so it stands out nice against the distress inked background. And once I have that in place, I'm ready to start putting it all together. I want to start with the frame and use it as a guide to place those long rectangle inside pieces flat on the front of a top fold card base. I'm going to start by putting adhesive all over my card base. I probably could have kept it a little bit more to the center, but I'll be very, very careful. I'm going to remove the post-it tape from the back that was holding everything together. Use this frame as a guide to place all of these rectangles flat against the card base. Then I'm going to take the frame and I'll pop that right off and I'm going to add foam adhesive to that to pop it up. If you don't want to pop it up, you could have gone ahead and adhered that directly to the card base. I'm going to use some thin foam squares from Scrapbook Adhesives. I love that they're super duper thin. So while I'll still have some dimension, it's not going to be too terribly high. And I went ahead and cut most of that out just because it was adding a bunch of foam squares to the back of this. I attached it to my top fold card base and then I want to attach my critters. And to make them lay nicer, I'm going to trim off a little bit on the bottom of each. And I'm also going to tip the cat so the cat is kind of hanging upside down and peeking down from the top of the window. This adds a really fun kind of whimsical touch. Something a little different. The bunny is going to be the only animal in this card that is popped up like um, the frame because the ears stick up so high. And I think if I tuck them underneath the border there or the frame, I think that you would lose a lot of the look of the bunny. So I'm going to pop him up with some foam squares so the ears will lay flat against the frame. And finally, my fox and raccoon, I will trim those and place them completely inside the window so that they're lying flat against the inside. And I'm really eyeballing it. You could also just draw a little line on these if you wanted it a little more precise. I tend to just kind of wing it. I'm going to use the tip of my scissors to 
get his little ear tucked underneath. Make sure that I don't cut off too much. I can always cut off more, but you can't really put it back on. Once I have these two guys tucked inside, I really felt like I needed a few accessories. So this is where I'm gonna go back to both the Dos Amigos and Three Amigos stamp set and stamp the cheese and hat and heart and paper and pencil. I've also taken a black Sakura gel pen and add, added detail to the eyes and noses of the critters. That's really gonna make them pop. Now all these little accessory images were stamped again with some jet black ink on a scrap of smooth white cardstock and are colored in with some Copic markers. With the exception of the cheese and the eraser on the pencil, all the colors have been used before. The cheese, I really felt like I like this color combination for it. This is the only image that is from Dos Amigos. The wadded up paper and pencil also in the Dos Amigos, but I'm using them from the Three Amigos stamp set. The wadded up paper is going to be in the blue color, and I think it's going to fit really nicely in that bottom right corner of the, the middle frame, right there next to the stamped sentiment. I'll die cut those with the coordinating dies. The hat is a solid black. It's just a solid image, so no coloring was needed for that. Grab the cheese frame and go ahead and run that through the die cutting machine as well. I'm gonna use glue dots to attach these to my card. And I, again, wanna lay everything out, make sure I like how it looks before I commit to adhering it to the card. I'm so close to being finished, I don't wanna accidentally adhere something that I don't like. So the hat first on the bunny I'm going to take that black pin again and go over the hat. It's going to give it a great glossy finish and make it super duper dark black, which is what I really wanted it to look like there. The cheese is going to be tucked to the left of the mouse, kind of in the corner. And then the pencil and wadded up paper are going to be tucked right there in the bottom right corner underneath the greeting, like I mentioned earlier. The pencil is so small, I did use liquid adhesive to attach it. And finally, that heart is going to be adhered right there between the two little guys at the bottom. Thanks for joining me today for this card featuring the Dos Amigos and Three Amigos stamps and dies from Mama Elephant. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Mama Elephant that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.